NFTs. Pictures of animals, pictures of dogs, pictures of people in pixel house things, whatever the hell this is. Did you know you can sell them for lots of money? Yes, you can. For example, I sold this picture for $542,000. I've made over $300,000 in gains with pictures of dogs. I've sold photography for 100x gains. And in this video, I, the most woke, empty house business advice guy with a hot body who is also family friendly and PG, get your damn kids in the room, tell them they're about to learn something. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Look, guys, I'm just going to skip right into it because if I do a monologue, we're, this video is going to go too long. And there's a lot to talk about because NFTs are one of the funniest, easiest ways to make money, but also one of the biggest, most deadly traps in all of crypto. And I can tell you firsthand because when I first got into NFTs, I lost so much money. In this video, I want to make the most complete guide you can possibly get when it comes to flipping NFTs because I've made a lot of money selling NFTs. But when I first got into it, I lost a lot of money. And so what I'm going to break down in this video is everything you need to know when it comes to every facet of NFTs. Now, am I the greatest NFT flipper of all time? No, but I've made some very large sums of money doing it. I've made some really great investments doing it. And on top of that, I've made pretty much every mistake you can possibly make when it comes to NFTs. So hopefully this guy is gonna show you how to flip NFTs, how to invest long-term in NFTs, and also the things you should never do. In fact, we're gonna break it up into three parts as well. And I'll even have a CryptoPunk investing guide for you so you at least kind of know what you're looking at. Also guys, really quickly, go to my Twitter, at CSS Becker. Not only do I talk about NFT projects I'm looking at, I'm getting into, I don't get into a lot, okay? But I, when I do, I do. That being said, I'm also gonna be giving away 10 Doge Pound NFTs that are valued at $2,500 each in a Twitter contest. You'll see a post in my feed saying, post your wallet plus Doge for the new video, the new NFT video guide, it'll be very obvious. Go there, post your Ethereum wallet plus the words, and you'll enter the win one of these 10. It's basically free money. You should go there and follow me. On top of that, I point out coins I'm getting into. I point out NFT projects I'm getting into. For example, I called Doge Pound when it was super duper cheap. Now it's not super duper cheap. You could have gotten one of these things for 150 bucks. Now they're $2,500 minimum. They were $3,000 a few days ago. You should follow me there. It's a good time. Good jokes. Also, I want to give the biggest disclaimer disclaimers. NFTs are the riskiest form of crypto. If you do not have money to lose, if you don't have money to throw away, do not do this because you will probably lose money when you first get into NFTs, almost guaranteed. On top of that, I'm going to talk about projects that I own. I'm not going to sit here and beat around the bush and act like, oh, I don't own these, just hop into them. I'm not going to do what other influencers do and tell you to buy things while I'm selling them or not tell you what I'm going to do. I want to be extremely clear with you. The projects I'm going to talk about in here are the ones I know most. I'm not saying buy these projects. I'm not saying hop into them or FOMO into them. A lot of them have already taken off. And I'm most of them all, and promising you, because what every other influencer does is say, buy this project, buy this project, and they act like they're going to hold forever. I am not guaranteeing you in any way I will hold any of these NFTs through any dip or any pump or anything like that. If you buy these, buy them on your own accord because you've done the research, not because you think I'm going to hold the bag and support the project and pump it for you till kingdom comes, okay? Do not buy these on my accord. Don't even buy these projects that I'm mentioning unless you like them and you've done your research on them. I'm actually suggesting you go and find your own projects and use your own damn head. So that's the disclaimer. If you lose money, I literally do not care. It's not my problem. It is your problem for not doing proper research on the project and jumping into something just because an influencer said so and not researching properly. Do not invest in this. If you do not have money to lose, you will lose some money. You could make gains. But this is not Alex Becker's damn problem if you lose money here. This is everything I know. I'm already doing you big enough favor. That's the strongest disclaimer I can give here. Let's continue. So that being said, let's just get into it. Let's go. So anyways, guys, in this video, I'm not going to really break down what NFTs are. You can find like a zillion videos breaking down what NFTs are. And if you don't know what an NFT is, why... Why in golly gosh, you silly sausages, are you trying to dump money into stuff you don't even you don't even know what it is? You can't even describe it. Okay? I'm assuming you know what NFTs are at this point. So that being said, let's just talk about more so the money you can make in NFTs, flipping and selling them. For example, you can see right here, here's my crypto punk sell record right here. It's not particularly great or, or spellbinding. You, you can see that uh, really my biggest gain is just actually selling my crypto punk right here uh, that I bought for 51 ETH at the time, which was about $83,000, and then later flipped for $542,000 yesterday. So the price of the ETH is fluctuating right here. But you can see that if you can get in the right point in NFTs, you can make an absolute killing. 
And you can see for just general purposes right here, if you look at my other NFTs, I made some pretty good deals. Like bought this one for, at the time, 9 ETH sold by 13.5. Bought this one, held it for two months. Uh, I think I bought it at like $30,000 and I sold it for $51,000. You can also see many examples like what I did with, with Doge Pound. For example, you could mint these for $150 almost two weeks ago. You mint them for $150 bucks, and then the lowest price for them right now, ETH just took a hit, but they were going for about $3,000 yesterday. So if you got in this at mint, you made literally about a 20x ROI minimum. I believe it's still it's about like an 18x right now with a little bit of a dip that's going on. Still juicy, still chunky. And I bought about 100 of these at that mint price. So that's nearly between two hundred to $400,000 back just for that twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 investment put into it. Again, juicy. You can also see stuff like here, like my Twin Flame sale right here. I was able to get 100X on this thing. I, or not 100X, actually. I was able to buy this for 0.55 ETH when ETH was much, much cheaper than it is right now. It was like $1,000 per ETH right, right then. Then sell it and it's, and then sell it for around I believe this is about $500 and then sell it for $40,000, making a clean, I don't even know how many X's that is. And also, if you go to my Twitter at ZSS Becker, you can enter a Doge Pound contest. I'm gonna be giving away 10 more Doge Pounds, which are worth like literally $2,500 to $3,000 right now. Go to my Twitter, go to the post that has a picture of dogs on it and that says Doge Pound Video Contest. We'll have that in the title. Just put in your wallet address plus Doge to enter and you might win a $3,000 dog. Again. Twitter address is at ZSS Becker. And I also point out these projects when I'm getting into them. So for example, everybody that got notified when I post about Doge when it was at Mint uh, is up 20X right now. Am I saying you're gonna do that with everything I post? Absolutely, positively not. But if you wanna see the things I'm looking at, you can follow me there as well. So overall, NFTs are very exciting, but I would be lying if I told you I only made money in NFTs. For example, there's a project called Hashmask. I lost tons of money. I believe about twenty dollars to $30,000. There's many other projects where I don't think I'm going to be able to sell. And I would also say I've lost probably $50,000 in NFTs at any given point combined. Maybe a little bit more than that. Because if you don't know what you're looking at, you don't know what you're buying NFTs, you buy into hype, you buy into FOMO, you're going to lose a lot of money. And so more so this guy is going to be focused on what absolutely not to do. So first off, let's talk about flipping and getting into projects and what I look for. So when you're buying projects, there's a few rules you need to have. One, always buy at the floor. So for example, if we look at Dog Pound right here, or for example, Board Apes. So when Dog Pound originally launched, you could mint these for 0.069 ETH. This is 150 bucks. The reason why you want to do this and why you want to get into new projects is because they rarely are going to go below the floor unless they they do what I'm going to show you here in a second. But they're rarely going to go below the mint price if you pick the right projects. So this means you're basically buying a get out of jail free card. This is not always going to be the case, but what you can do a lot of times is buy the mint price. And because it's not going to go any lower than that, you can usually always at least exit at the mint price. So it puts you in a really good position to make really, really crazy gains, but also kind of defends you a little bit. The worst thing you want to do when it comes to NFTs, unless you love the project, is buy the NFTs when they're pumping. Okay, I'm going to be very, very, very clear about this. So let's look at like, for example, Board Ape Yacht Club. All right, so if we go to the lowest on sale right now, all right, and this is, this is a great project. This is one you can invest in, but here's the thing. When you get into these projects like this and you start seeing it go to these prices, what's going to happen is you have to understand NFTs. It's not like crypto where you can just exit at any time. Okay, you have to find a buyer to exit. And so what you need to understand and the two things you must never do when you're buying NFTs to flip or sell them very quickly or make a quick return is you do not want to, A, buy projects that are pumping really hard because again, what happens if the project stops pumping, people stop buying. And so the floor goes down very, very quickly. And so that comes into the second thing I'm gonna tell you is you always want to buy the floor if you're going for quick flips. So look at this right here. Board Apes right here. If you buy this floor right here, 14.75, and this market tanks, you could probably exit this pretty quickly at maybe 10 ETH, 8 ETH, or something like that. Okay. But if we go down here and we start buying middle tier Board Apes, all right, we start getting into like the 30 ETH range or something like that. These are the hardest ones to sell. 
When you're looking to buy or sell or flip NFTs, the hardest ones to sell are going to be the ones in the middle because if people stop buying, they stop buying the middle and they stop buying the top because it's just that damn simple. If they're not going to buy, they're definitely, if they're not buying the floor, if they're not buying the lowest price ones, they're not going to scroll down and buy the middle tier ones. Those are going to be ones that are very difficult to sell. So for example, you're not going to be able to find a buyer as easily. Someone's going to have to scroll through all of them and pick out the one that you're trying to sell. And so the only way you're going to be able to guaranteed sell it is to be able to sell it at the floor. So rule number two of NFTs is first off, try and get into new projects. But if you're going to buy into an existing project, buy the floor if you want to protect yourself as much as possible. For example, when I got in the hash mask, what I did is I went and bought a bunch of rare ones and then hash mask started dipping super hard to sell that for even 50% of what I bought it for. Why? Because people buy the floor and they buy the top. And you don't want to be buying the top if you're getting new to NFTs because that's the most expensive ones and the highest risk ones you can possibly get into. Though it is easier to find buyers for those than it is in the middle. Next, when you're looking for quick flips, you have to look for projects that are started in a healthy way. Okay? So for example, if we go and look at... I'm going to show you the biggest mistake, the biggest stinker NFT I ever bought. This is the uh, Logan Paul box breaker. Right? He was selling this for one ETH. The price of this thing is 0 0.07 ETH right now. A 90% loss on this stupid, crappy NFT launch. And why did this happen? All right. So what you're going to see in NFTs a lot of times is, is celebrities in particular, they love to do this. They love to launch NFTs at very, very high prices. For example, if you look at Mila Kunis, Stoner Cat, uh, Stoner Cat, it started at $1,000 per cat, which is... And let me explain this in great detail because this was an easy, easy, easy way to lose your butt. So when influencers, celebrities launch their NFTs, the hype and FOMO that's in NFTs right now and the abusively high prices they're already priced at allows them to get away of charging like $2,000 for their NFT. This is what Logan Paul did, okay? The problem with this price right here is that in order for an NFT to have value, you have to find a buyer, okay? And if buyers don't consistently see the price increasing, they don't buy, okay so when you buy any uh, an nft for 2k or like for example uh stoner cats when you buy it at a thousand dollars or whatnot you have to find someone uh to sell it to period and because there's no track record of large nft sales or increasing price no one's gonna buy it so for example if you buy a new nft project and the mint price is a hundred dollars okay well the next person you have to sell it to is gonna have to buy it for two hundred dollars or something like that if you're gonna make a gain and they're gonna see it and there's gonna be momentum with the project the second a project fails to sell at a higher price it crashes so for example logan's paul uh his started at 2k and then suddenly there was a thousand of them that were already out there at two thousand dollars he made like five six million dollars off of it well no one wanted to buy this because the supply was super high and the price was super high no one was going to buy this for twenty five hundred dollars uh no one was going to buy it for three thousand dollars so the price went it exploded okay um and influencers love doing this they love to start the price set at 1k if a project's price starts above 100 150 bucks 300 dollars tops do not buy it because you have to understand in most NFT projects, when stuff is being flipped, for example, Bored Apes right now, when you sell an ape for $30,000, that $30,000 goes to you and a small percentage of that goes to the people that made it, okay? When you buy it directly from the influencer creator, it all goes to them. So like Logan Paul pocketed $6 million while everybody else lost money, all right? Me, Lacunas, and Stoner Cats, wish her the best. I like, I like all of her work and whatnot. She pocketed $10 million when everybody else then has to worry about reselling it and whatnot. Okay. That, that's, that's not, that's not a fish. That's not how you grow a community. That's not how you start a project off where, where the creator makes all the money. And then the people in the community don't make any money. That's not a good way to start a project. That's not what you want to look for. Okay. Again, that the floor is not, if the mint price is not hundred bucks or even close to free, 200 bucks, 300 bucks top, stay away from it like the, pro, the plague because it's a cash grab. You're giving a creator tons of money for pictures that have no established value yet. Don't do it. For example, Doge Pound started at $150. Uh, in a better example, if we go look at my profile right here and we remove this search, you can look at, for example, Mooncats right here. You could mint these for $20. You can mint them for 20 bucks. And so what that means is the project has room to grow a ton. And now you can sell a Mooncat for you know, $1,300. And so you want to find projects that start very cheaply and are not pushed by hype. Okay. For example, Stoner Cats, uh, something that just got released. I'm not hating on Stoner Cats by any chance, but it started too high. Okay. So when you buy something where the mint or the original floor is very high, you have a lot to lose if that floor gives out because the floor starts too damn high.
Okay, and so in order for people to make money in that, they have to flip it for another high price. You want to find something where the price is stupidly low and it only has anywhere but up to go. If you go and look at the Bored Ape Yacht Club, for example, we go digging into that. These things started at a very low price as well. I think it was like 0.08 ETH. I think that's 200 to $300 at the time. I'm not exactly sure. Now the lowest possible one is going for about thirty dollars to $40,000. So one, JRNY. Nice, okay? But you want to look out for those projects that start in a healthy way because then they develop a community. Then people aren't in it just because of hype and FOMO and they, it gets a good foundation of fans and then just grows because there's nowhere else for it to go. So the next thing I'm going to look for in projects is I want to look for a really good roadmap. Okay, and so one of the reasons I invested in Doge Pound, and guys, look, I, I don't mean to talk about Doge Pound a ton in this video, but it's really the only project, project I've aped into recently. I'm going to be talking about punks and other types of NFTs here in a second when it comes to investing in them, okay? But the reason I invest in this one is because it has a really, really, really good roadmap, okay? There's tons of things that are going to accelerate the price of the original dogs, like breeding, them generating tokens, and some NFTs actually can generate passive income. For example, Hashmask, uh, can generate tokens to change the names. And so the tokens are very finite. So to change the names on the NFT, uh, people have to use these tokens and burn them or destroy the tokens. So they get destroyed as soon as you use them. Thus, people need more tokens. And these NFTs generate tokens in your wallet. Thus, you are generating passive income and tokens you can resell or swap for things like Ethereum or USDC. So if we look at the, the roadmap for Doge Pound right here, they're going to have breeding so you're going to make other dogs with different types of traits. There's going to be tokens that you can use to buy items to make your breeding better. And it's going to start its own kind of game or ecosystem. And I'm not going to really talk too much about it in this video because I'm not here to talk about Doge Pound's roadmap. But you want to look at something in the roadmap that is going to accelerate the value of it. For example, in Board Ape uh, Yacht Club, if you own one, you're able to write on their bathroom board or something like that. I don't understand Board Apes that much. I haven't looked into it as much, but there's a lot of other things similar going on over there. Uh, for example, other NFTs will drop other NFTs if you own them. If you owned a CryptoPunk, you would have gotten a MeBit that was worth like $8,000 uh, at the time when it dropped automatically put into your wallet. So you want to look at things that are going to increase the value of the original NFT. If it's just pictures, if it's just art, that, that's not, it, it, in this type of competitive environment, that's not the best thing to be aping into. If it's just art, it's just, it's just the picture. You want to find things that increase the value of the NFT. Usually you want to look for a team that has a really good roadmap. And the final thing I'm going to tell you is look for something that has a really good community. For example, if you look at Bored Ape, you look at Doge Pound, you look at CryptoPunks, you go into their discords, extremely active, and the owners of these projects are extremely communicative. They're talking with the fans, there's everybody going back and forth, and a community is actually the bedrock of most great NFTs. So you want to look for that as well. Or finally, what you want to look for is a first of its kind situation, which is pretty rare these days. But if you go look at Twin Flames, I was one of the first apes on this. I owned 10% of them at one point, and... I made a, a lot of money selling all those back. But if we go look at the Twin Flames collection right here, okay, this started off at 0.5 ETH. Now the floor is, I don't even know, like 40, 60 ETH. It's, it's absolutely insane what this project has done, and I sold way too cheaply. I'll just, I'll just say that first and foremost. But the reason why this project is taking off is because it was the first photography project, I believe, in, in NFTs, or at least the first major one. Okay, and when you find these first projects, what happens a lot of times is you can also look for events around them. For example, this got picked up by South by or Christie's. I'm not sure which one. It was sold in an actual auction. As soon as that happened, the price of these skyrocketed. Same thing happened with Beeple's artwork. If you're looking at individual artists and NFTs, if you can find emerging artists who are going to take off later on, that's one way to make a huge gain. And you could do that just by going to Maker's Place or Super Rare and finding new artists whose art you absolutely love. So you can buy it super cheaply from them. And then if other people think it's awesome too, the price is probably going to go up on those things. But you also want to find artists where they have an event coming up, for example. So the second, the second Justin uh, announced that he was probably going to be in Christie's or whatnot, I knew the price was going to go up. And so I delisted a lot of mine and didn't sell them. As soon as it went off, I sold them for immense profits. Okay, so for example, I was buying them... 
for $500 and then I sold one right after the auction for 7.5 ETH when ETH was like $4,000, $3,000 or something like that. Gigantic ROI. Simply by finding the first of its kind project. Okay, so those are the things you want to look at when you're looking to flip or sell them at least in the first year. We want to find projects that, especially if we are new to NFTs, we are buying at mint and the mint price is cheap. The mint means you can generate the NFT for the first time. If you don't know what minting is, you need to just go figure out what the NFTs are. If you are not rich, you don't have a lot of money to blow, you don't have a lot of money to risk, buy things at mint when it's a brand new project. Find brand new projects that have great roadmaps and great communities and very communicative owners. Find projects that are the first of their kind. There are not many of these anymore. So you're probably not going to be able to, to do that. If you follow that roadmap right there, and, and then finally, if you're buying into an existing project, you're not going to catch every project for the first time. What you need to do is always buy the damn floor. Do not be buying middle ranges. Don't be trying to flip rare ones. That is expert level NFT selling. That will get you burned. That will make you lose a lot of money, even if you're good at this. Because if the floor goes out, market takes a dip, the, the floor will always usually sell. Middle will not sell at all when we're in a dip. You can't sell them. You can't find a buyer. A person has to go and search for yours and buy it. It's not going to happen. And you're going to have to take a major loss to move that NFT. Same thing applies to the tops. Always buy the floor. And the floor is, again, the lowest priced NFT, which you can easily do by going to OpenSea, going to buy now, going price low to high, and you can see the floor. The floor on these is, Jesus, guacamole. I'm going to, this is, that, that angers me. Okay, I had 10 of these at one point. I sold, I, on average, I usually sell them for like five ETH. So that being said, where can we find out about these projects? It's very, it's very, very simple. Follow people on Twitter, join NFT communities. That's who's going to be talking about them. Follow NFT experts on Twitter. For example, myself, JRNY, are great influencers who talk about NFTs. Uh, Elio Trades is another good one. But more so, follow the NFT OGs. For example, G Money, Pranksy, and a few other people like Justin and, and whatnot. Follow these people on Twitter. You can just actually go to my Twitter feed and you can just follow the same people I follow if you want. I, I have a pretty good Twitter collection following thing. That's where I get my info from. Okay. I found Doge Pound on there. I found Twin Flames in a Discord channel. I found CryptoPunks early on, just scrolling around Twitter and reading about it. And I was able to get in CryptoPunks when they only priced at $15,000. I found Mooncats from Twitter, from a post from Justin. And I found pretty much every other NFT I've made money on from those three sources, Discords and Twitter, and in a few from influencers. For example, JRNY called uh, Apes when they were like $200, $300 a pop. Okay. Just following those three things right there, you could have made better gains in NFTs than any coin on the entire marketplace. That's where you find the stuff at. Now, finally, let's talk about long-term investing in NFTs. A lot of the same rules apply, and we're going to look at CryptoPunks right here. First and foremost, when it comes to long-term investing, you do not want to invest in projects that are not super established. Okay? So what are super established pro products, uh, projects? These are going to be your original artist on Super Rare and Maker's Place. So, for example, if you find an artist that's been around since the beginning, so if we go look at the, the original artist on Maker Place or the original artist on Super Rare, their artwork is always going to keep appreciating over time. Maybe not from this point right here. I think NFTs are in a bit of a bubble, all right? So I would really be going mostly for flips right now. But these are going to keep appreciating over time because there's just so few of them. And I'm not going to explain the rarity of NFTs and whatnot. But if we can go look at punks right here, this is probably the best NFT to invest in long term because the value is just going to keep going up. It's a little bit out of people's price range right now. You can find other projects like Mooncats or projects that have historical significance that are a little bit cheaper right now. Again, I don't know if I'd be entering for long term investment prices right now. This is, it's a little high. But for example, find those first of the kind projects, find the historic projects, find the ones that are tied to artists that were the original artists. Because they're going to be just like Picassos, they're going to be just like other art that you can collect. Stuff that has a collectible value that's already very, very much established. So let's just talk about punks in this example. So when we're looking at NFTs like punks, obviously what determines their rarity is going to be their traits, okay, and then what it looks like. And... The reason why NFTs can make 
somewhat good investments again prices are high right now is because the people buying these things are not looking to flip them they're looking to hold them for a long time or, or treat them as a true collectible they're just going to collect them these are what people use for their profile pics on twitter uh, people that are buying at ninety three thousand are not buying this thing to flip it for one hundred twenty thousand. they're just not okay and also people can't really panic sell these eff effectively let's say you've got 50 punks right now Okay. If the market starts to dip, you're not going to be able to sell all 50 of those punks very quickly. You're just not. For example, me and Doge Pound, I couldn't sell them very quickly if I wanted without hurting the market. And if the market was dipping, there's no way I could get out of them very quickly. I'd probably only be able to sell like five or 10 a day max. Same thing applies to punks, but usually you can buy one of them. So the best way to invest in punks right now, just buy the damn floor. Just buy the damn floor. That's it. Okay. At least if it goes down or, or, or nukes or you need the money quickly, you can sell it at floor price price for example if you come down here to like the middle tier and say i buy this punk right here if if the market starts to dip i'm i'm not going to be able to sell this this punk quickly you're going to have to find a buyer who's going to pick this specific punk of the entire middle ground so that's what i want because there's so many choices right here with floor punks and floor nfts people are just buying it simply to buy one OK, when you get to the middle ground, people are going to start being picky and choosing, and looking for certain traits, and they might want one over another one. For example, let's say a person really likes top hats. Well, he's not going to buy my my mohawk right here. Simply not. Okay? And so obviously how punks are going to work is there's certain rarities of traits. For example, as we go down here, um, for example, hoodies are much, much rarer than uh, anything without a hoodie. OK, and so. If we go all the way down to the bottom, aliens, for example, there's only seven of them out of 10,000. So when you're looking at NFTs, you can go and quickly click on most NFTs and you can see the rarity of them. Now, the rarity in punks is, is usually pretty straightforward, okay? You can see the traits and as you scroll down, you're gonna start seeing the trends and what's rare and what's not. For example, hoodies are rarer than no hoodies. Uh, the purple hats are more valued than people without purple hats. And as we go down, uh, as the skin colors change from zombie or like this pilot cap or this red hair on the side, these are very rare. So, for example, if you look at the red hair, there's only 68 of them. Okay. If we look at zombies, for example, there's only 88 zombies and 286 with the 3D glasses. So, this zombie has more value uh, than a zombie that doesn't have the 3D glasses. But at this point, it's all subjective once you get down here. Okay. So, understand that. And my best advice is if you're a new NFT investor, if you don't know what you're looking at and you're looking at projects, either buy based on the rarity. So for example, in Doge Pound, the first thing I did when I saw the project starting to take off is I went and started buying rare ones. So for example, I bought this astronaut one for $10,000 because there's only like eight uh, SpaceX or Doge X dogs. I know the crowns are very rare, so I went and bought those. I know alien eyes are very rare, so I went and scooped that up. Okay, but that's me being a, a, that's my experience in NFTs showing right there. Am I the best buyer and flipper ever? No, but what I did is I bought into the project very early, okay? If this was going on and the project been out for like three, four weeks, no, I wouldn't have done that because it, it could be an inflated price and I don't want to buy the middle. If the project's very new, buying the middle and the top could be extremely lucrative. For example, when CryptoPunks were fairly new, buying a alien for $20,000 was the deal of your damn life. Buying an alien now, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So if a project's new and you see it pumping out and you want to make a long-term investment or a flip, buying the top and the middle, once you understand what you're looking at, can be very, 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 very juicy. Okay? For example, I could sell the dog right here that I bought for 10000 for thirty to 40000 without much trouble. And if, if, dog, if Doge Pound does what Bored Apes did, which I think it will, the thing will go for hundred grand, no problem. But that's a risky, that's a risky trade. But what you can also do when you're looking at new projects is, for example, if you don't know what you're looking at, I can come in here and look at the rarity. All right, so I can go into Doge Pound and I can go and look at categories of the dogs, not categories, actually, uh, the traits. You have a list of traits right here. So if I go to eyes, you can see that alien eyes are extremely rare. Cyborg eyes are the rarest. This is why they go for like for ETH or something like that. Okay, so I can see, oh, these guys are the rare ones. So if a new project starts off and I wanna make a, a suave investment or a suave flip, I can go and look at the rarities on the sidebar. All right, so that will help me, at least give me some insight on what's gonna be rare in the marketplace. So you can see like, for example, 
the ones that are not under buy now that have cyborg guys, they're selling for eight thousand, ten thousand dollars, probably fifteen thousand dollars now. So the person that bought this one right here has probably already made like a 30, 40 percent ROI on his cyborg guys. Okay, and so that's what you're gonna look like look for when you're investing. So that's kind of my overall NFT guide, guys. I covered a lot of projects. I covered CryptoPunks and I covered a few other projects I've been in. The only thing I can really talk about though, guys, is the projects I have been in. Then guys, my final advice to you is only be in a few NFT projects at a, at a time. The reason I can read CryptoPunks, the reason I can read Dogepound, uh, the reason why I can read Twin Flames and similar projects to those is because I've looked at them very hard. I can understand rare photography projects. I can understand avatar projects very well when they launch, try to focus on only a few niches. And then when you're in those few niches, only look at a few projects in those niches and understand them. If you understand Bored Apes really well right now, you could be making a literal killing. I don't understand it, so I don't invest in Bored Apes. I don't understand uh, the, the community. I don't understand what they're looking at. I don't understand what they value. I don't understand the traits and all the whatnot. And it's also super inflated right now. So I'm just not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm going to look for new projects, learn those new projects, and mask them before they become the main market projects. Okay. And so that's generally what I think about NFTs. Pretty much everything I, I think that's important about NFTs. There's a few other things you could probably do, like understanding NFTs that generate tokens and, and whatnot. But if you follow that basic guide right there, you're going to do probably better than I did. For example, I wouldn't have lost so much money in Hash Mask if I hadn't, if, if I had just bought the floor. I wouldn't have lost money in other projects if I hadn't bought the top of the project when the product price was already pumped up, okay? Every single time I've made a lot of money in NFTs, it's when I bought very, very early on in the project. And every time I've been able to easily exit, it's when I was able to sell at the floor. And every project I've made oodles of money on, I got at mint or I got very, very early on. I can't stress that enough. You do not want to be buying the middle and tops of projects unless you know what you're looking at or you really like the project. If you really like the project, for example, you like punks, you love Doge Pound, you love Bored Apes, or whatever new thing is hitting the market, then by all means, buy into it. And what you also need to remember as well is that you don't have to buy into the big projects. You can find small projects and make the same gains. There's plenty of small projects where you can make a 5X very quickly just based on a small community. It doesn't have to be a giant project like the ones I mentioned. Those are just gonna have to be the ones with the highest valuations that have gotten the biggest gains. You can always get into smaller projects and make those two, three, five X's or hold long-term and store your money in those as well. And so, sorry guys, I know this wasn't really a funny video. I wanted to get this out because a lot of people have been asking me. And again, if you want to get in on that Doge Pound giveaway, follow me on Twitter at ZSS Becker. I also share projects that I'm looking at. I very rarely get into a new project. If you want to get into that, go to the post that says new NFT video guide or whatever, all right? It'll be very clear. Put your Ethereum wallet plus Doge in it, enter, and I'll be giving away 10 at this point in time, about $2,500 Doge Pound NFTs. And I'll send it straight to your wallet and it'll be cool and everyone will have a great time. So the date when I'll be sending them or announcing them, plus all that is on Twitter. I don't have anything else to say because I've been talking for like 30 minutes and I don't want to talk anymore. I'll catch you guys later.